Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I know it's been a long, long time. I'm sorry, life just took over. So today I am back to show you guys how to have the best quality renders on your Clue 3D project. This was a request from one of the subscribers here on the comments. So please, if you do have questions, just put it on the comments and I'll go through them and I'll try to make videos for each question that you have. I just want to help you guys on the journey of learning Clue 3, 3D. That's what I'm going to be doing today. If you want to see how to have better uh, render images on Clue 3D, just keep watching and don't forget to subscribe like this video and comment down below anything you guys want to see so now i have my clo open with my project and i'm gonna show you how to achieve the best render possible within clo without having to export everything and put in like blender or cinema 4d or something else so first thing you want to do is make sure your avatar is on the pose that you want uh either with a sofa like i have here or standing up if you created any backgrounds make sure your background is looking good and make sure your quality for the garment is on high resolution okay so this here needs to be on particle distance at least 10 but i recommend going down to five so make sure everything is on five particle distance simulate your garment give it time to fall nicely to drape over the avatar fix anything that you need to fix with your garment if need be after that if my clothes decides to think yeah there we go <laughs> After you have everything simulated and nicely done, we are just going to jump to the render window, which is located up here. It just opens like this. You just have to click it. Give it time because it takes a bit to update the scene and show you what the scene looks like right now. Everything within Clo works faster or slower depending on your computer. Every machine is different and it takes different times to render. Okay, so today we're not going to go through all the different setups for the render i'm just going to show you how to get the best quality so obviously you can go through your image property your camera property and your lighting properties but today we're just going to focus on the render properties which is this one here first of all choose between your cpu or gpu rendering i usually do cpu because my computer is is fine but you could do with the graphics card if you like make sure your noise threshold is low as low as you can go without crashing your computer uh the best one is on 0001 <laughs> This would make sure your image doesn't have any noise, you know, like it shows up here right now because my image is not updated, but this is called noise. All the tiny, tiny dots on your image, the bigger the number here, the more noise your final render will have. So make sure to lower it down, okay? If you're making a project and this image that you're saving is still halfway to the project, are you gonna get feedbacks on it still? You don't need to have it as better quality as possible you can bring this number up keep it on like 20 if it's an image that is still gonna get reviewed still gonna get changed you're still not 100 sure if it's going to be your final one you can bring the noise up but if not if it's your final one bring it down okay uh, if one is far too much for your pc maybe five ten not more than 10 if this is your final render uh and then down here you have your max render time so how how many minutes are you going to allow your computer to work on this image um yeah so i usually keep my one in 30 minutes so i give my image literally max of 30 minutes to be worked on obviously the more time you give it the better the image but not everyone has a hundred minutes to give per image so this depends on you you can either set this up to render overnight and give it as much time as possible or if you're working on it through the day you can lower down for maybe an hour you know 60 minutes or 30 minutes it really depends on you to get the best quality possible you should allow the most time 100 minutes but if it's not possible go maybe down to 30 60 40 
you know, somewhere between those numbers. So this all depends on how much capacity your computer has and how much time you actually want to give the computer to render each image. So it depends on you uh, and the quality will depend on those choices. Uh, if you have any puckering on your image, make sure you have your puckering intensity, um, either two or three. It just depends on how much you want the puckering to show. Another thing that really makes a difference is your quality choice. So you have a chance to choose the quality for your lighting and for your material. Literally is how, like, how good do you want the lighting in this photo to render and how good you want the fabric, the um, material for the glasses, for example, or for the shoes or for any accessories that you have to be in this photo. So I usually render everything on very high, the lighting and the material, but you can maybe lower the lighting if you want. Put the lighting in high and the material in very high, especially for close-up images. If you want your fabric to be as close to physical fabric as possible, you want to have the material on very high. So it will show all the detail, everything that you have on your fabric will show perfectly if you have everything on very high. Those are basically all the changes that you can make to the render and achieve the best quality possible. Obviously the pose and the lighting that you choose and the camera effects that you choose will like change your render, but as of quality of the render, this is what you have to do here, okay? This is what you have to play around with and decide either how much time you have to render this image, like how big is the image. If you're only saving it to put on Instagram, obviously the quality needs to be good, but it doesn't need to be as good as if you were saving to have a poster made. You don't need to give it 100 minutes to save something for Instagram. You can lower this down a little bit. You can maybe have the material on high if it's not a close-up image. You know, it just depends on how much time you have and where you're actually using this photo. Another trick to make sure is the resolution here on the image size. Always have it at least 300, okay? At least 300. But yeah, once you're happy with everything, you're just gonna click on your, you know, start button to save your image. But that's it! That's all! you can really do with Chloe when it comes to saving your render images or your render animations, okay? So that's it for today. I hope I answer your question. Uh, if you like this video, please let me know, like, comment, subscribe to the channel for more Chloe 3D and fashion content, and please go follow me on Instagram and TikTok for more content. Yeah, that's it. Goodbye!